Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we gather for Mass this evening, we continue Jesus' lesson. The last two weekends in a row, he's talked to us about forgiveness. And look for the connection with the Gospel today, which is about God's everlasting mercy and generosity. Preparing ourselves for the same mercy that we call upon every time we approach our Lord. We call to mind how we might better serve our Lord and turn from our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary and her virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me in the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in our lives and on earth, peace to people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you many thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly name. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commandments of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. 
The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is here. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The, the Lord, Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. Again, he went out around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowners found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, some of the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual daily wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones only work one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden in the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheap. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do what I wish with my own money? 
Are you envious because I am gener ge generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus' parables often can include a surprise, but few of them have us raise our eyebrows as much as this one does. And yet it was one of the parables and as much a teaching as any of them. Certainly, it is living out what the prophet said in the first reading we had that God's ways are high above our ways and different from our ways. Certainly, most everyone raises their eyebrows because they wonder, is this equitable? Is it, is it the same? But certainly, we also know that the usual daily wage in terms of heaven is salvation. It's not quantified by anything other than God's total love. Somehow, it's easier for me to understand in terms of a parent and a child that parents love their children equally and fully with all of their heart. The one who was born first is loved with all of the heart of a parent, equally the last. No one gets more love because they were there first. They are all equally loved. It seems to me when we understand God's generous love and salvation that way, it's a little easier to take this parable than the usual daily wage is, in fact, God loving us as his own beloved children. But yet, there is a part of us also that understanding that God calls us to labor for. And there, it seems as though this can be much more challenging. God's ways are not our ways, and it seems as though we have to get on board with what he asks for us, and why is it the same for those who get on board much later? I think the answer is there in what St. Paul tells us today. It was actually quite beautiful. He's been talked right in the beginning that Christ would be magnified in his own body. That somehow Jesus would be magnified. And if you and I give ourselves to the Lord Jesus as we do as Christians and we take on his life at our baptism, how can we not also pray that every day Jesus would be magnified more and more in us. And there is the challenge, to let God's love and generosity somehow magna be magnified in what we do. St. Paul will say in another way, too. He, he will say, may Christ increase in me, and may my own desires decrease. St. John the Baptist will say the same thing. I love that word, though, magnify. That somehow, as Christians, we pray that Jesus will not just be present. After all, we came to receive him today. But there we pray that he would be magnified in us. And if that is the case, then it's Jesus' generous compassion and love and forgiveness that must be magnified as well. Indeed, a challenge. But dare we pray? Especially in a world that is, is torn and in a society that is, is so polarized and so easy for us to kind of sit back with our feet in the dirty clay and just grumble about the world. And yet, the Lord calls us to be one family and to love generously and somehow to pray that all of us get to heaven, period. All of us. All of us. In fact, the 
guilty. In fact, the undeserving. All of us. Yesterday, about 3.30, I got the phone call from the secretaries up at Harrisville. My father visit was from Parish in the yard. If you haven't heard, he, he died well into his, his many, many years of service. And the first question was, Father, do we have to call a priest for a priest who died? And I said, well, we call a priest for everyone, but Father Vincent's in heaven. We will pray with him, we're going to pray that he prays for us. We're all equal when it comes down to this. We all come before the Lord as his beloved children, every one of us. And I do pray that Father Vincent went straight to heaven for his many years of service. But I pray no less for every single person that I go to. Every single one. And we pray for each other when we beat our breasts at the beginning of Mass, when we confess that we're all sinners together, and that we depend on each other for this prayer. Why? Because in each of us, Jesus is magnified. And his forgiveness and his compassion his generosity of spirit needs to be magnified in each and every one of us. God's ways are not our ways, said our first reading. But remember, that was the Old Testament. That was before Jesus walked the earth and our Savior came. When Jesus came, he said something totally different. He said, love each other as I have loved you. <clears throat> Somehow that was the challenge to live what we said. Only a little bit differently, God's ways must be magnified in us. If we're going to love each other the way Jesus loves us, cross. Somehow we have to pray for each other, every single one of us, to be loved and cherished by God and His mercy equally and fully with all that God has to offer each of us. Our Alleluia response today. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, to listen to the words of your son Jesus. And he gives us a parable today. St. Paul's last words are the words that I'm going to leave you with. Conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. Very good. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, our Church. I believe in the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, that I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers before the altar of our Lord. For the church, that we may humbly accept God's gift of salvation and recognize that every day is God's gift to us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all who are working to aid those in need, particularly firefighters and rescue workers, that God will give them strength, wisdom, and protection from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for all who have been impacted by the wildfires and hurricanes, that God will comfort those who have lost homes and livelihoods. Help them find new homes and the resources that they need, and give eternal rest to those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater stewardship of creation, that God will impel our hearts to oppose the misuse of, earth, of the earth's resources and empower us to work tirelessly to protect the magnificence of nature for further generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For our parish family, that we may live each day striving to be faithful disciples through trusting in God's providence, in showing love and compassion to all who enter our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the soul of Father Robert Bissett, for his family, for the parishioners and, par and parishes that he has worked in, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, hear our prayers and unite our hearts and our souls to you, that you, by your love we may show your love to the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. <laughs> Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come in. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all our patron saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrament, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity their plague in church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, what a holy our bishop and administrator, the other bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O Merciful Father, gather to yourselves all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who we are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, <coughs> give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and taught by divine word, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have heard the word, but only say the word for May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe.
companion and to find, I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth bearing Christ with your lives. Amen. The funeral for Father Bissett has not been announced yet. I'm sure we'll post it on the website as soon as we know. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be you. The body of Christ. Amen.